In this video, I will demonstrate and show the solution of the problem of using the same shared DLL across different solvers add-ins. When multiple versions of the same DLL are loaded into the app domain, .NET Framework will only consider the first one and will ignore all others. So here I have two solvers add-ins, sample add-in 1 and I also have sample add-in 2. Let's start SolidWorks. So those add-ins just add two command group into my menu. Run command is a handler of button click. So here I have a third DLL, which we'll call shared library, uh, which is going to be utilized by both of those add-ins. So for now I have built the version 1.0 and I will just copy that into my first add-in and I'm going to reference that I will need to create an instance of the class from shared library and call the show message method. I will display the name of the method in my uh, message to differentiate that in SolidWorks. Uh, so when I click it now in SolidWorks, I should see the message box and it is displayed as I would expect. Let me now go ahead and modify that shared library. So let's say I'm going to add uh, more parameters to my message box show. So to display the title and also to display the uh, OK button and also to display the information icon. So I also want to bump the version of the DLL. So it's going to be 1.1. .1. So please note that my uh, third version of Aiden is still referencing 1.0. So I will copy that shared library and put it into the second add-in only without modifying of my first add-in. OK, so let's just browse to that library. So shared add-in 2. Uh, OK, and I just select it and I can show that it is 1.1 and if I go to look at my uh, first add-in, uh, it is still 1.0. Let me just uh, copy uh, that call from first add-in and paste it into the second one. And now uh, I just want to change my parameter and rebuild it. So when I run it in SOLIDWORKS, I expect uh, clicking on the first command to show me the previous add-in which is basically what happens here. But when I click on the second one, I would expect to see the new message box. But as you can see, the message still looks the same without the caption or an information icon. Let me show you even more interesting behavior. So let's start SolarWorks again. And first I click the second command. So you can see the message box has a new style. But if I click the first command, it is also showing me the new style. So whatever DLL is accessed the first is used by the add-in. This behavior may introduce way more problems than just the style of message box. So let me come back to my shared DLL and rename that method. So I just want to copy the compiled DLL and replace it into my second add-in. Okay, and when I come back uh, to my Visual Studio, I should see the compile error which is uh, obviously mean that uh, my DLL doesn't have that method anymore. So I can just uh, use the right version. So show message with caption. And let's start SolidWorks and see what is going to happen with my first add-on. So let's start. Go to Tools, run the command. Let's run second one. So all good here. But when I first one, like nothing happens. So I don't see message box. So looks like there is some exception happening. So let me come back and just put a try catch block in here to see uh, what's going on. Now I will start calling the command from the first add-in so I can catch the exception from my second add-in. So let's do that. And you can see uh, exception is still wasn't catched. We're thinking that exception might happen because of the missing method. And the problem is uh, the exception happening on the method which is calling that one. So in our case, we cannot catch it. So what I need to do is to create a new method and call it from the run command 2. So now run command 2 will throw an exception. Let's confirm it. So go to tools, run first command, all good. I run second command. And now you see exception is handled. So I can go here and I can check my uh, locals. 
and you can see that it says method not found, which is pretty much what we have expected. To solve this problem, we need to ensure that our add-in is only using the DLL it was built with. For that, we can use the binding redirect statement in our application config file. Let me get back to my shared DLL and revert all of the changes, so it looks like version 1.0. In order to use binding redirect, my assembly needs to be signed and strong named. So I'm going to generate a new uh, strong name key. Just give it any name. I can use password protection, but in this case, I don't really need to do so. Let's now compile that version and put it into the first add-in. So I'll just go to the folder, copy the DLL, ensure that it's a correct version. I will just replace the file and make sure that my project still compiles. So my shared DLL is now strong named and I need to find the public key token of that. I can just use a reflection to quickly uh, get this done. So I'm just going to print out the name of my assembly and it will include the public key token which I can use for binding redirect. So now I just need to invoke that command and I will be able to find that information in my output window. This is the information I need for my binding redirect. I need to add new application configuration file to my project. I need to add the binding redirect node and specify the assembly identity. So I need to put the name, public key token and the culture. Now I need to specify which versions needs to be filtered and what version should be redirected to. So like in this case I'm going to redirect to version 1. Let's go ahead now and modify our shared library to version 1.1 and uh, undo those changes. So we're going to have the OK button, we're going to have a caption and we're going to have the information icon. Let's confirm that our compiled DLL is now 1.1, yes, and let's just replace it in our second add-in. Public key token does not change when assembly version is changed. Now I only need to add similar application config file to my second add-in and only difference is it should redirect to version 1.1. Now when both add-ins are compiled, let's start solvers and make sure that behavior is correct. Click in the first command, showing the correct result. Second command, now correct. Thank you for watching this video.